Dixon. One of my favorite DJs, if not my favorite DJ, um, somebody who I kind of started following when I first got into dance music, electronic music, whatever you may call it. One of my kind of first DJ heroes alongside with Rich Carter, Villa Lobos, uh, DJ Harvey, Jeff Mills. Um, the first people that I kind of saw right online, like, wow, these guys are amazing. These guys play the kind of stuff that I'd want to play. They have a certain sort of type of style. Um, they just carry themselves in a certain way. They have a very um, particular way of how they view music and how they view DJing. And I just loved how they approach their artistry, right? So I'm a big fan, follow them all over the place. Dixon for, as a good example, I've seen play maybe more than 10 times um, all around the world. Um, and somebody who I is have immense respect for as a DJ and as a label head and as a general kind of artist within the dance music scene. So we have this issue going on at the moment where we have these things called plague raves that they've been dubbed by the techno Twitter lot, which is essentially high flying DJs, DJs who probably can afford to stay at home, deciding to go play in far flung places where they've decided to preemptively um, open up the economy, open up certain sectors of the economy in order to allow tourism to flood back so that they could um, support their local economy. So these are places such as Switzerland who have kind of dealt with COVID pretty well. Maybe the places like Tunisia who have essentially opened up the gates um, to the world in order to kind of boost their economy. Um, maybe it's prematurely, but they did it regardless. Places like Paris, uh, places in Germany now at the moment. There's a couple of raves happening in Berlin, such so as open air events. But there's a few places in Europe where these players are kind to pop up and a lot of the big high-flying djs who probably can get away with you know not having a steady income for the past you know for six or seven months are deciding to go and play at and they're also kind of drawing a lot of criticism online because people who attend these parties aren't keeping the distance there's not a lot of face coverings it doesn't necessarily seem like a place where you can have good practices right i think that's the main reason why clubs and nightclubs and bars and stuff were closed and gyms and stuff and whatnot were told to halt especially when covid was spreading because we realized that the place where it spreads the most is in, in in confined spaces and there's no way that you can run a place like a nightclub with covid in mind and ask your punters to keep their distance because you know once alcohol gets in your system a bit of drinking a bit of drugs whatever you're doing when you're going out you're definitely not going to be able to resist the urge to get close to people it's just not going to happen so um that's what's been happening and it's it's a sad state of affairs because i think in the beginning of covid i i was under this really um naive um impression that we would kind of covid would would cause a reset in the dance music community scene would be at a point where there would be less onus on big glitzy high ticket number um you know selling artists and stuff or you know the top 10 20 voted djs on an ra list would essentially be dispersed around the global community so they're not all playing at the same places at the same time um obviously domestic promoters would have to rely on their own contact book domestically of artists that they can book because they couldn't get other people to travel and um, because res travel restrictions will still be in place that's, that's what we assumed right we thought that was going to be the case we we're going to suddenly come out of covid um in this new climate of club space where you go to a local bar and you'll see um or you go to a local club and you'll see somebody that's really talented that lives in your area as part of your community given a chance to play on a big stage as apart from playing the usual big names because you know they can sell tickets but that, that hasn't that hasn't happened actually what's happened is that all the play graves are only booking the big selling acts because they want to guarantee they get their money back because if you're going to put on an event during a global pandemic you're taking a hell of a lot of risk and you know the event could get shut down it couldn't be successful people might not buy tickets whatever the case may be you just want to guarantee that that person that's arriving is going to contribute x amount of tickets to the door regardless of what happens to the event regardless of how poly producers put together regardless and actually makes me think too um this would have been a great time for the comments on ra to be around because this is what made ra special at the time was that you could leave comments on events so event walls and event um event yeah event listings and event walls or event comment sections on ra turn into a place where you could spot the great promoters you could spot the people that came in like charlatans who just put a couple of active, active active speakers in the corner of the room and just hope for the best you could tell the promoters who essentially treated their punters like you know um 
you know bloody scum you can see the places where they provided a safe space all comments were kind of filled in that kind of way and since they took away those comments um there are a lot more you know shabby things going on in the scene and i think this would have been a great place for there to be a lot more dialogue and communication between punters and the people putting things together and maybe us on the outside just looking on in um and unfortunately um it's now come to my doorstep because dixon the person that i huge respect had decided to do one of these play graves in tunisia now again you know he could easily argue and say hey tunisia uh, opened up its economy i wouldn't have gone if it's not legal to go um, it's legal to go you can gather in place you can gather in open air environments with so many people playing there but i guess the issue is that you know it just sets a bad precedent i think somebody of his stature doesn't need to play at this event i think you don't need to leave your home to go and see don't get me wrong dix is not in the kravitz right he plays far less gigs and he's obviously a lot more um, purposeful about where he goes and all that's kind of for good things but Dixon isn't the person that you need to break your quarantine for to go and see this isn't a once a lifetime opportunity Dixon's going to be back playing around the world maybe not exactly in Tunisia but in around the play around the world somewhere over in the African continent somewhere shape or form within the next year or 18 months it's not the only time he's going to be in that region so for fans to kind of burst through the doors to get there is weird for Dixon to want to play there at this certain time as well is also strange. It also it makes you think maybe these DJs at this level don't get paid as much as you think they get paid. Or if they do get paid that much, the money is still, you know, money is relative, I guess, at that extent, right? I guess if you're a DJ who's been playing at that level as a Dixon, 20 plus years, 20 plus years in a game, playing at a ridiculously high level at all the best places with some of the best promoters, putting on some of the most memorable nights, you ex you kind of live on that budget right so i'd assume if your finances have taken a hit for the last six or seven months there's going to come a point where you need to go and make some money you need to go put food on the table you need to be able to put your kids through school and um, provide for your family you need to go and do that so i i get the rock in a hard place but i don't know man there's just something about traveling all that way to Tunisia to go put an event it just doesn't really sit right for me and the other part of it which i mentioned to before to somebody else was that it's just why is it that the dance music scene feels the need or they feel like they have the right to put on events when no other industry is doing so you don't or no other genre in music even right there's no hip-hop events there's no gigs there there's no gigs in the indie music scene nothing really happening in edm um, there might be some illegal raves here and there some chain smoker events but for the most part they're keeping their head under um they're keeping um out of the spotlight and maybe doing some stuff on Twitch and stuff but there's no other genre that exists outside of the dance music scene that feels the need to put on events and have to DJ. And some of the DJs too, unfortunately, unfairly, I'd say, from my point of view, because I don't think it's fair to count people's pockets or tell them what they should do with their career. But if you're unable to play gigs and you need to pay for your rent, you should just go get a normal job. Like you really should. Obviously, it's going to be difficult if you've been DJing since you were 13. You've got no real life experiences, but you're going to have to get a normal job one way or the other. There's no way you can be able to play enough gigs anyway under this current conditions to afford you yeah to afford your lifestyle it's just going to be not possible right especially if you're at the entry level stage right you're getting paid what a grand to 10 grand per set it's not going to be enough anyway right that money's going to go instantly um so i guess for dixon again it's a concern because i think at his level i think i read somewhere that Mac massio plex or something along those lines who i'd maybe say has the same sort of booking fee as a dixon gets paid anywhere between ten thousand to thirty thousand per gig and um, five grand i heard for after parties if that's true like why is dixon playing in tunisia and again not counting his pockets it's not my business right to count people's pockets not say what they're doing their money but it's really strange and anyway this is a video here from business test business test no uh, or business techno on Twitter that kind of you know goes out of their way to shine a light on some of our more questionable figures of the dance music scene. They put together a little video, I guess they found on Instagram a compilation of uh, Dixon playing on August the 13th, and I'm going to play the first one for you now. Um... And again, similar to the other videos, no dancing. Fair enough, it's a breakdown, but you know. Big Ciroc sponsorship. So good.
and the sad thing about it right is that this looks fun and reminds me of the time last time that we saw uh dixon play at fold for the innovation label night like maybe one of my top five clubbing experiences but from number one the crowd right absolutely dead on their feet no one dancing no one interacting people just standing looking at him like as if he's kasabian that's a bit annoying and then i guess for the as a dj too is this really how you picture your first gig is your first gig back really a gig where you just go and collect money or is it a place where you go and kind of rekindle your love for tech dance music right because i remember watching this documentary recently for pioneer where they're basically detailing um, experiences from DJs around the world about how, they, how they're going through COVID and how they're dealing with it. And Honey DJ made some really good points about she just doesn't feel like, she she doesn't feel inspired enough to even stream or to make mixes and all that good stuff and keep herself active because part of the beauty of dance music was being um, with people, with the community, hanging out with strangers, right? Making, putting a smile on someone's faces, seeing people's emotion as you're putting on a different track. And without that, you know, it's not the same doing it online, right? And it's also not the same doing it at these really corporatized events. You know, I saw a big, massive Ciroc sign there on the left. Obviously, um, again, I don't, I don't blame the Tunisian promoters. I guess if you put an event on like this, you need to make sure you get your money back. But is this really how you picture your first gig back? Just standing in front of people who are just staring at you, recording it all on their phone, not really giving a shit. Because imagine if this was an event that he did it with actual fans of the music. Not actual fans, no, that's snobby to say that. But if he did that in an environment where people are more um, accustomed to getting loose and getting on it, this would be a different vibe. Because I think like Tunisia, like the events happening in Zurich, like the events happening in Venice, like the events happening in other places, they seem to be only, um, it seems to be a really bougie crowd. I think that's what's happening. It's less about Tunisian people are not familiar with dance music because I'm sure they are. It's more so they're playing for promoters who obviously have the pockets to sub, sub, to kind of put on this kind of event. Because imagine, they, they're, they're also not having, they're also not putting on events every weekend. So their pockets are suffering. So if, if a promoter is able to put on a party and fly Dixon over to play in, a, you know, now in the middle of August, that means they have deep pockets. So usually a deep pockets would mean that they're going to put it somewhere glitzy, somewhere where there's get girls in stilettos with pencil skirts at the front door taking your name, uh, with big burly guys, a security everywhere, um, with like installations from Ciroc and shit going on. I'm assuming that's what's basically happening, but it just doesn't seem like fun to me um, as a party or as an event to go to and totally not worth it during a global pandemic, in my opinion. Um, another video here. Like, look, legitimately, look at the lack of dancing. Like, these guys aren't dancing. Like, the, this is honestly so bizarre. Same like we saw the crowds in Italy with Nina Kravitz. The same with this. And again, the Italy one is weird because I think if you look at the Kappa, is it Kappa Futures? That's probably the best dancing thing I've seen. Or maybe the crowd at DC10 that's a bit mixed. But for the most part, I don't think Italians, that's a good representation of Italians. I think that's just the crowd that goes to those kind of events um, that Nina Kravitz was playing. I think the actual Italians who are actually fans of techno and like i said before they're probably the best their best fans in dance music when they're your fan they really love you um i think they really get on it and they really let loose but i think that place where they put the events are at it just attracts a certain crowd it's like going it's like putting on a an event with ben clock and stuff and inviting you know guys and girls that go to the chill and firehouse it's going to be full of people like this just standing around looking cute <laughs> Like, how can he not be dancing to that? <coughs> and again, maybe for me as a as a punter, maybe there's a bit of jealousy because I can't go myself. I know for DJs, there must be a hint of jealousy. There has to be some of the people that get annoyed online because you would have hoped, especially if you was a middle tier DJ, like, you know, someone that plays on one of those dead online radio shows, right? Um, and you play in a couple of bars here and there. It might be annoying that you don't have the opportunity to play in these kind of places because you feel as if this should be your opportunity to do so. And instead they're flying around these high flying people who could probably do without. And again, doing a virus was a big assumption. You don't know what people are doing with their funds. You don't know how people live their lives. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, the more you earn, the more your daily... I'm a big... Yeah, I believe that most people do that, right? Where they, if they earn more, their daily expenses tend to go up too. So I'm sure, you know, 10 grand per gig, 30 grand per gig doesn't really, you know, 
make a dent that much because you know you are you know spending a lot on your shirts if you're Dixon. Uh, you're putting your kids through probably you know you, you you've got your kids in a good school because you can afford to. You drive a pretty decent car, maybe a couple. You maybe supporting your partner who doesn't work or works with you. There's a lot goes into that, so I'm sure that money doesn't really go as far as they want it to go. Hence the other projects they do, but. I'm sure if you're a middle tier DJ, you should be really pissed off if you're seeing this. It should be really annoying. And then the last slide, I guess, is an indication on how the situation has changed. Is this is from uh, to daily change a spike? I guess of the twenty first onwards. I guess it's, that's a week. Is it the twenty first? I think that's a week. That's why. That's why he's right. Is that why he wrote that? I think the thirteenth. Yeah, because that's how they calculate, it, right? It's like the week. It's like the week that follows. Um, so where they get the results. So I guess there's been a spike, and you know. If you believe if you believe the reports online uh, via the World Health Organization that most of the spikes are due in part to economies reopening and young people gathering in large groups in places where they shouldn't be gathering, and then you know asymptomatic people spreading the virus. That's usually the kind of regular thing people are kind of going towards. So this kind of is maybe an indication on maybe the promoter shouldn't be put on in events because it does more harm than good before the cases are actually being dealt with and handled in the right way. And DJs shouldn't be going because this isn't the most um, altruistic thing to do. It doesn't really have, there's no real foresight in the future. You're just kind of going there to collect your check and go home. You're not really thinking about the damage or the footprint you're going to leave um, going there at this event, right? And they're not going to, I don't know. It's just difficult to really to really figure out. Like I said, I think the, the blame should be laid at the DJ's feet for accepting the gigs and going in the first place. I don't think you could turn back around and start saying, oh, I didn't know because you knew. And it should be laid at the promoter's feet for endangering their local or their their um, neighbours and their fellow citizens to this when they don't really need to go through this, right? They could easily put on an event at maybe the same scale with a local artist without having to fly people over or maybe reduce the capacity and it might not be such an issue. And then the next slide, it says Tunisia COVID situation is critical. And that was on the August of 13th, the same day that um, Dixon was going to go play that rave. Um, which again is really bad, man. I think, opt like I said, it's supposed to say optics wise, yeah? Optics of a rich white European DJ traveling to an African country with inadequate COVID management and rising cases to play a play grave and get even more people sick is quite shit, isn't it? Which is true. Um, and again, I'm a big fan of Dixon, but it's hard to excuse it, man. You can't really excuse that whatsoever. There's no excuse you can be um, that that would make any sense, you know? Um, again, unless he just says, look, I need the money, I had to go, it is what it is. Even then, you know, it still makes you think that a lot of these people. Um, they like to tell, they like to give the impression that they care about the scene and that they're all about giving back um, you know but most of these people are only playing they're only DJ like for a lot of these people if there wasn't a lot of money in DJing they wouldn't do it I don't think so I think if DJs got paid let's say if all DJs got paid what entry level DJs gets paid between 1000 to 10 or 1000 to 5 I don't think a lot of them will play they won't play as much as they do at the moment I think a lot of them go go and play so often because they're chasing a bag legitimately i think there are a few that exist that are just freaks that you know they can't stay at home they have to go outside they have to be you know they have to be in between massive you know monitors blasting techno to strangers in a dark place they just they just can't live their life without playing but there are some people who just pick up their record bag and go and play just to go collect the bag that is it which is sad really um but hey i guess that's it's just a job like anything else in that regard but yeah, that is the playground. So let me know what you think, man. Should Dixon have gone? If you're an Innovisions fan, do you think Dixon should have gone? Did he um, disappoint you as a fan? Um, do you understand his rationale to go? Um, does the blame get put at the feet of the Tunisian promoters? Um, or does it solely lie at the feet of the Innovision head honcho, Dixon? Let me know in the comments down below.